So I said, I want to talk about movies and television more on this channel. I want to share my filmmaking knowledge with the world, whether they like it or not. I said it and I meant it. We're starting off on a pretty weird note, but I saw Megalopolis. I have to get something out of this. It can't be a complete and utter waste of time. It can't. There has to be some sort of gain on my end after seeing that movie. I have to complain about this movie to someone. Before I spend the next 10 minutes straight up dunking on this man's hard work that he spent reportedly a hundred million dollars on, let me pay tribute to Francis Ford Coppola. If you don't know who Francis Ford Coppola is, you might have a very casual relationship to movies if you don't know that name. Because Francis Ford Coppola is responsible for possibly three of the top 10 movies of all time. Maybe four, if you have a certain taste. Godfather, Godfather 2, The Conversation, and Apocalypse Now. Literally no one on the planet had a better 70s than Francis Ford Coppola. Maybe the Bee Gees, I don't fucking know. After the 70s, it could have been argued that Francis Ford Coppola was the greatest filmmaker of all time. Four Stone Cold masterpieces, two of which, Godfather and Godfather 2, will last beyond humanity. The aliens will take Godfather and Godfather 2 and say, this is what humanity was like. That's how important those films are. Now with Francis Ford Coppola, after the 70s, there is a really hard fall off. He takes a lot of big swings that don't work. He makes some solid movies, some of which are beloved, some of which have pretty significant followings, but they're not really stone cold classics, especially when compared to Godfather and Godfather 2. After another Godfather film that is not good, Godfather 3 is not good. In the 2000s and 2010s, Francis Ford Coppola falls completely off of the map. But during that entire time, his entire career, he's working on Megalopolis. He's trying to get Megalopolis made. From 1974, he's trying to get in the theaters. He's changing it, he's developing it. Hollywood will not make it. So then he decides to take all the money he's made, all the credit he has in Hollywood, push all his chips to the center of the table and make it on his own. Use his own money and his own street cred to make it on his own. And it's bad. It's really fucking bad. It's so bad. When does an empire die? What is Megalopolis about? Good question. That's a, that's a good question. Um, let me try my best to tell you. Okay, Megalopolis. The story of Megalopolis is this. In New Rome, New York, I'm not exactly sure what the fuck it is. It's... Is it in the future? Is it right now? I'm not sure. I'm not sure, really. I, is it an alternate timeline? Alternate reality? I'm not sure. Just, it's a city. And it might be New Rome. It might be New York. It might be the United States. I don't know. In this city, in the future, alternate reality? I'm not sure. But in this city, in a strange world, there is an architect named Caesar there is an architect named Caesar who wants to rebuild society into this utopia using this new sort of, I'm not, he's using this new, using this new material called the Megalon. He's going to build this utopia out of Megalon with the help of the mayor Claudio's daughter. I forgot her name because she's so underwhelmingly developed and completely discarded throughout the movie. The movie does not care about this woman. 
I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting ahead of myself. But basically, Caesar's trying to build a utopia using Megalon, and people are trying to stop him. From here on, I'm gonna really start spoiling this movie, but honestly, this movie can't be spoiled because it has no real plot. Let's just put a spoiler alert right here in the video. Okay. <sighs> Megalopolis is bad. It's bad. I'm not the first one to say it. I'm not gonna be the last one to say it. It's bad. I wanted to have some crazy zag opinion. I wanted to be different and cool. I wanted to be like, oh my God, this movie's actually genius. But no, 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 no. It's dumb. It's bad and dumb. It's very bad and dumb. It's the worst kind of movie. It's the worst kind of movie. It's a movie that thinks it's deep. It thinks it's revolutionary. It thinks it's pushing the envelope. It thinks it's challenging the viewer when in reality, it's not doing any of that shit. It's not. It's really just annoying. You know that really annoying theater teacher you had in high school? You didn't want to take theater, but you had to take some sort of art credit. You remember that teacher? This movie feels like he wrote it. It's so fucking just annoying. This movie is so annoying because it takes itself so seriously. It thinks it's this really biting satire when it's not. <laughs> it's not at all. It's so basic. It's literally, oh yeah, rich people, bad. Overconsumption, bad. Duh, nigga, duh. What the fuck else do you have to say? And when you go deeper, it's even worse. It's literally just, oh yeah, white guy, please save us. All rich people are bad, except for the white guys who are smart. Elon Musk is going to love this movie. Elon Musk is going to have the time of his life watching this movie. And then you have this woman played by the beautiful Natalie Emmanuel, who I love, I love her. She is written like an idiot. <laughs> The entire movie is Adam Driver just explaining things to Natalie Emanuel. There's a moment, the first time they meet is, it's just such nonsense. You want to help me? Yeah, and while I, while I want to learn. And you think one year of medical school? entitles you to plow through the riches of my Emersonian mind? Entitles me? Yes. Uh, entitles me? Yes. Entitles me? Yes. You have no idea about me. You think I am nothing? Just a socialite? No, not nothing, but I reserve my time for people who can think about science and literature and architecture and art. You find me cruel selfish and unfeeling i am i work without caring what happens to either of us so go back to the club bear it all and stock the kind of people that you enjoy fine i will come back when you have more time i i'm sorry i can't explaining a scene in this movie gives me a headache it gives me a headache and then there's the other women in the movie aubrey plaza Aubrey Plaza's name in this movie is Wow Platinum. What? I love you, Aubrey Plaza. I love you so much, and I would die for you. Why did you say yes to this movie? Why did you take this role? You've read this script. Aubrey Plaza is having the most fun in this movie. She's having a good time. She looks great. Her costumes are bad, but she still looks really hot in them. She's having the most fun. She's not taking it seriously at all. And that's great. But the character is offensively bad. It's so bad. She's the worst person on the planet. She's a literal evil hag, a witch. No redeeming qualities whatsoever. No nuance, no inner life, just a terrible person. I assume it's commentary on what Francis Ford Coppola thinks is the vapid and empty headed nature of entertainment media. Yeah, you're like the 50th fucking movie to do that. I like that Aubrey Plaza had fun. I'm glad she had fun. 
I'm glad she got to look hot. I'm glad she got to work with the director she probably idolizes. I wish it was better. I really do. And then you have Shia LaBeouf. First of all, we're Team FKA Twigs over here. I totally forgot Shia LaBeouf was in this movie when I bought a ticket. If I had known, I probably would not have seen it. I definitely would not have seen it. But he is. He's in this movie and I saw it. And ill. Very ill. The performance is gross. Is it good? Is it bad? It's just gross. I, just, I don't like him. I really don't. And it seems like Francis Ford Coppola is taking advantage of that with what he has the character actually do. He's this little shit heel that just runs around and causes havoc. I don't I don't know I don't know where this character is in relation to Trump. There's a lot of stuff where is he speaking to the current moment? There's a lot of that in this movie. There's a Taylor Swift kind of thing that feels pretty half-baked. I don't know how much he knows about Taylor Swift or what she represents. It seems like he hates her and thinks she's a pox on humanity. A lot of this movie is just half fake. Adam Driver's performance is the most well thought out. It's the best performance relative to the rest of this film. He elevates the entire film to at least watchable. It's very much indicative of what Francis Ford Coppola was interested in. Adam Driver's character is clearly a stand-in for Francis Ford Coppola. Francis Ford Coppola has a lot of access to grind, whether it's with capitalism or Hollywood or technology. He has a lot of shit to complain about and he's doing it through the Adam Driver character. There was one moment in this movie where I said, oh, that's interesting. There is an assassination attempt against Caesar orchestrated by Shia LaBeouf's character. A 12 year old kid posing as a fan walks up to Adam Driver while he's in his car and shoots him. Now, I think, oh, did they just kill Adam Driver? Did Adam Driver's character just die? I was genuinely shocked by it. I was genuinely like, whoa, what the fuck just happened? And I thought, oh, that's interesting. Let's see what happens. This is so insane. <sighs> Natalie Emanuel's character uses Megalon to repair his eye. I say, oh, that's, that's a little bullshit. That's a little bullshit. That's a little fake. You, you seriously undo the one interesting thing you did? But then they reveal his eye and oh, he's like haggard and crazy and he has this crazy eye. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. He's becoming his invention. He's using his invention to enhance himself. But two minutes later, the eye is completely fixed. What the fuck? What the fuck? You just, you do one interesting thing and it means nothing. It is completely disregarded. The characters act like it never happened. It has no effect on the plot whatsoever. There is no material repercussions for a man literally getting shot in the face. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, David Lynch, Lynchian. No, it's not. No, it's not. St stop, we need to stop excusing bad storytelling and using David Lynch's name for it. It's not, it's just fucking bad. I need to stop talking about this movie. I'm going to have a literal headache. I feel bad making this video beating up on an old man who just wanted to make a movie. For decades, he's just wanted to make this movie. He wanted to make Megalopolis. He spent hundreds and millions of dollars of his own money to make this movie right, which is kind of wild because this movie is bad. It's bad in a way that movies used to be bad. It's a movie that was supposed to come out in 1970. And that's fascinating to me. It's already a historically bad movie. How many of those come around in your lifetime? Not many. There's so many bad things about this movie. So many. I didn't even talk about the terrible CGI, the terrible dubbing. There are multiple times when a bad take is used. Like an actor literally flubs a line and it's in the movie for some reason. This movie's also supposed to be like an immersive experience. I didn't feel immersed at all. It just felt like a regular ass movie. What the fuck is Megalon? It's really hard to make a movie. I'm a filmmaker. It's hard to make a fucking movie, especially when you're at the level that Francis Ford Coppola is. The level of filmmaking he's trying to achieve is tough, but this was bad. This was awful. This was ugly. When something is in your head for as long as Megalopolis was in Francis Ford Coppola's head, it can definitely get mutated 
and go all over the place. At the end of the day, Francis Ford Coppola doesn't give a fuck. Francis Ford Coppola doesn't give a fuck about me. He doesn't give a fuck about you. He doesn't give a fuck about the box office. He just wanted to make this fucking movie. So go back to the club.